Welcome back, everybody, for another Workshop Showcase Wednesday. Today, we are back again with Empyrean Galactic Survival following the Alpha 7 update release. So today, we are taking our look at the LCV-1 Belafonte. Now, this ship is named after the research ship in the movie The Life Aquatic. The Belafonte is a size class 1 unlock level 10 capital vessel which makes it perfect as a starter capital vessel. So one of the first things that's listed in the feature list on Steam for this design as well as one of the first things I noticed about the ship is the large transport bay with the retractable loading ramps. The information on the Steam Workshop states that this is modeled after military landing craft and when I look at this ship I can't help but think of a water-based landing craft that slams up onto the beachfront and deploys a ramp offloading a big tank. The large transport dock area is perfect for storing a large number of smaller hover vessels, a single large hover vessel, or a mixture of in-between. On both sides of the transport bay area you have stairs leading up to a little walk around that on both sides has a doorway entering into the command area. Once you take the pilot seat, before you even start flying, you'll see this nice little tag that gives you some introduction to everything. As you can see, it gives you switches on each side for you to turn certain things on and off. There's numerous interior lights that are automatically powered on and off by motion detectors to save power. You also have the equipment bus circuits that shut down the non-essential devices such as constructors and food processors. To your left side, you have both the switches for the nav lights and the turrets on and off. On the right, you have your engines on and off as well as your RCS on and off. Coming down from the pilot seat, we have an O2 station, a medic station, and behind a shutter door, an armor locker. To the right, we have the equipment bus master control, which turns on the food processor and the constructor. And then you also have the gravity system that turns on and off. On the other side, we have the loading ramp control, which has a very nice little additional feature. When you flip the switch, it not only changes the light, but changes the sign to tell you if the ramp is retracted or extended. To the side of the medic station, we have our elevator, which leads up through an air shutter door to the landing pad for the small vessels up top. Coming down to the bottom of the elevator, we have the living quarters common work areas. We have beds along with small tables here. We have seats for people to hang out. We also have cargo boxes leading all through here, as well as a large constructor. Over on this side, we have an O2 station and an armor locker. We have our single ammo box here, as well as another medic station, an O2 station and armor locker on this side. And leading through this way, we are now in the kitchen area where we have one, two, three, four, five, six fridges. We also have three growing plots. You're not exactly going to be growing a lot of food in here, so you probably are going to be bringing more with you from your base when you leave a planet. We also have two food processors here and three large oxygen tanks, and you can see behind there the fuel tanks. You also have a shower and a toilet here to help with, of course, your sickness, radiation, poisoning, things like that. Coming back out, we have a cargo box here, as well as another shutter door, which leads down some stairs to the outside world, and another cargo box here. On each side of the ship, there is a minigun turret for protection, and that is the only external weaponry this ship has. Now, as I said earlier, this ship has lighting that is controlled automatically by your proximity. So when you move far away from the ship, the external lights will turn on and off as well. Back in this area, we have two doorways that lead out to the cargo area. Now, as I said, this is a large transport bay area, which has more than enough room to hold something as large as, say, the Thunder Tank. If you land on a planet or a moon where you do not need the gravity generator, by turning off that as well as other things to conserve power, you can get about 94-95 hours worth of power usage out of this vessel. Turning on just the gravity generator though, will drop that to about 73 to 74 hours of usage. The Belafonte has enough capacity to hold over 32,000 fuel and almost 22,000 oxygen. There's a total of 19 cargo boxes, one ammo box, six fridges, 
two food processors, and one constructor on board. Overall, I really like the Belafonte, and I really kind of wish this was around when I first started playing because I probably would have used this design myself early on. Alright, well that is it for today's workshop showcase. If you are interested in checking out this design, I will have a link below in the description. Again, this is the LCV-1 Belafonte Capital Vessel. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure you hit subscribe and tick the notification bell so you can keep up with all my content during the week. You also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, keep up with everything, or just say hi there. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this vessel, and if there is a similar vessel you would like me to do a showcase episode on, put it in the comments below and I'll take a look at it. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I'm your host, Mr. Spicy, and I will see you in the next episode.